and express freight intrudes upon the night. A transitory moment in an industry that is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week business. And it's J44 just going through Wairi. Oh, yeah. He's got a crew change at Tangiwai. 336, just on the distant there at Hitei. Okay, um, had some CTC trouble earlier on at yeah. Wairi, but it uh, seemed to rectify itself. I haven't called a maintainer or anything. Okay, so it's no problems. Go, see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow night. On the shift tonight is Tony McDowell. The pressure is at night time, yes. Sometimes you've got the RT going and you've also got the speaker phone control phones going and, and line phones as well are going in the office all at once. Thousands of tons are rolling in the darkness of this early day. Morning, George. Very well. A dozen express freight trains on the trunk, driven by men of the top roster. A massive manoeuvre, masterminded by a handful of men in train operations and train control. Track. Uh, not in Taihabi, signal maintainer. I want to change a relay at Taihabi. What trains do you have around, please? Time now is uh, 1.30. We're well, uh, six three nine just away from Mount Aurora at uh, 27. Uh, Tango 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 The lives are at you. on your hands, you've got to make sure that the information you tell them is always correct. There's no room for error. For the past hour and a half, Tai Happy Station has been silent. With express freight bound for the far ends of the country, trains stop as little as possible, usually only to change crews. For parcel traffic, there's probably more contact between Tai Happy and the outside world at the intercity depot at this time of the morning than during the day. At this time too, halfway through their shifts, these locomotive crews from Taumaranui and Palmerston North should be home before sunrise. At about the same time as coaches from Wellington and Tauranga get to their destinations. Coordinating train crossings is just one tactic that makes the train controller's role strategic for railways' commercial success. An all-purpose transport system suggests regularity and routine, but there are never two nights exactly the same on the North Island main trunk. Last night's wagon of wine for Tamaki and fridges for Tyre near Dunedin passed each other up the way at the next crossing loop at Mataroa. George Marsden served his apprenticeship back in the days of steam. His generation's seen a lot of change. I have a fair knowledge of the road. And it's, you know, it's, it's part of everyone's duty to have a good knowledge of the road. You've got to be um, on, on the ball. Uh, know what you're doing and it's like everything else, safety, safety factor. Hauling 1,000 ton trains through mountain country in all weather, over 400 kilometres in a nine hour shift. Yeah, driver 661 to uh, central control. Over. Terminator control receiving uh, 661. Yeah, could you tell me if. Um, six, six, driver and controller have a solitary relationship based on trust. And while they converse, uh, they seldom meet. 66, and you get 66 National Park. Yeah, 
666 right now. Since 11 o'clock last night, Taumranui train control has directed two express passenger, five goods, and eight express goods trains through the central North There's Island. Two other trolleys here. Johnny Marsh taking 20 minutes from Aofonga to Rauremu. Yeah. And uh, Willie trolling quarter of an hour from Oakuni to Karaoi. During his shift, okay. Controller McDowell handled 15 trains, and he never saw one of them. Hi, Hi, Nearing Blenheim, cars for consignment across Cook Strait and up the North Island main trunk tonight. Approaching Dunedin, fridges a day ahead of the white wear which passed through Tai Happy last night. The marine forecast for the area of Cook Leaving Tory Island Channel, to Cape the Aratika. Island to Cape Campbell, until a new day has dawned. Northwest, 30 to 40 knots, easing slowly during the day. Good morning, West Coast passengers. Transalpine Express now standing in the main platform. Yeah. Main Senate 30. Still reliable, okay. right. the tablet signalling system, which once protected trains throughout much of the railway network, lives now on borrowed time in Southland and a few other places. A lot of people come in and say, oh, what a complicated machine you've got there. But really, it's not. Where railways lorries take over, Mel Schumach runs railway's northern outpost. There's a train in the morning, gets in at 6 o'clock in the morning before I get to work, and uh, he goes out just after 5 o'clock after I've gone home. Otherwise, I don't see a train during the day. A bit unfortunate, because I like to see trains. Anything from 50 mile north of Long Grey is, is my territory, and we're covering clients over that whole region, especially right to Cape Reunion. Yeah. Routine upgrading. By half past seven this morning, some 30 track gangs are at work all around New Zealand. Transshipping between long haul coach and the local bus, Max Tenquist gets ready for something like his 6,250th run around Banks Peninsula. The Wellington Parcel Pottery. Over a hundred years old in parts of the Tyree Gorge. The Otago Central Line is probably New Zealand's oldest true branch line. You come up here in the morning and do an inspection and you think that everything's going to be all right and you get up around the corner a bit and find there are great heaps of rock there and it sort of makes it life interesting then. Ray Meek is unique. He spent all his time on the job maintaining country branch lines. Oh, well, I've lived in Edendale all my life. Well, most of my life I've been away a few years, but I come back, but... Yeah, they all just know me as Rose. Rose of the railway. Arahura sails for Picton. Right, I let go, fire it. 
and after its lonely journey in the night, Freightliner 337 joins the parade into Port Nicholson. This morning's rhythm of life is like most others, and tonnage off the trunk for the south will follow on later sailings at 10 and midday. Just really know them as voices, you know. People can just pick up a phone and start talking straight away, you know who you're talking to, even if they don't tell you who they are. Just that you've talked to them for over the years, I suppose, for quite a while, and, uh, and you get to pick up their voices that way. Central control from Banker 601 and Oak on the over. Control receiving 601 Banker. Yeah, will we be required to bank 709 Mark? Over. I just heard he's a, he's a banker load and. Um, He's on good time. So, um, do you want to come back to the company? I'm going to be talking to you. Yeah, Roger. Nine o'clock in fleet control. Ernie Porter's job relies on technology and a strong a gut feeling. With the high side wagons in the Christchurch area, particularly for the um, West Coast coal traffic. Some of railway's earliest traffic was coal trains at Littleton. Once virtually every commodity naturally came by rail. Once there was little competition, little talk of marketing or promoting transport and distribution. Yeah, well, you can expect uh, fruit through from probably two main main areas from us. That would be Spring Creek and South Island. Uh, we're about two, two, over two million down on our land cool at the corresponding period last year. So we're going to, uh, to need to have delivery of the product on our depot prior to about midday. And that's uh, ZA, ZP class wagons that you normally use. We're a bit short of box wagons in the North Island. If we get some up to tighter and perhaps some further north. Wanna please, could you uh, look towards putting some ZAs and ZPs up to Picton and we'll get them on whatever ferries we can get space on. UDA 71, that Fisher and Pike wagon from Tyree. Um, it was on 180. Could you check to make sure it comes on 465 for the 740 sailing in the morning and then we can get it on to 630 out of Wellington? Mid morning. Apart from all the other travellers, 564 particular people are on the move at this moment. This bridge we're going across, ladies and gentlemen, was assembled in two weeks for the Christchurch Exhibition. This enabled West Coast... 57 people are making a journey on the Transalpine Express from Christchurch to Greymouth. We're 183 foot above the riverbed. On Arahura, Captain Munro commands the well-being of 464 passengers, over 100 motor vehicles and a freight train. The vessel is now just proceeding through Torrey Channel entrance at a speed of 20 knots. The weather in Picton at the moment is a northerly wind of 10 knots and the weather is fine. The vessel will be on the berth in Picton at 7 minutes past 11. That is 7 minutes past 11. Relaxed in their coach, 38 tourists have yet to be warned by Alf Young of the awesome scale of Milford Sound. Correspondence lessons for the kids. I got one lad down here who considers he gets about 95% of the mail to all lessons. It's a day excursion run, but also it's a uh, general run with uh, vegetables, milk, papers, mail, bits of everything. Jack of all trades, and probably a master of none. That's about the size of our job, I suppose. Max Tenquist's rural mail delivery run has also quietly grown into a small tourist operation around Banks Peninsula. Well, the roads are quite good now to what they used to be. First started driving, it was shingle from Kaituna to Ankara.
day there are five travellers and shortly they'll need a good head for heights. You've got to be a friend to everybody. You've got their mail and you've got their milk and uh, bread. And uh, they're all very pleased to see you on the, on the, on the mail run. Uh, and a lot of them come out and ask you if you've seen any stock on the road. You're sort of a bit of a, a shepherd or something for them as well. shunting train, linking the smaller centres, ensuring the local touch. And there's a bus at about half past eleven and that's what time the goods train arrives as well, so they normally arrive at the same time. Rosemary Henriksen has achieved the ultimate in what has been traditionally very much a man's world. A lot of people say, oh, you're doing a man's job, but I don't look at it that way because I don't find it strenuous at all. I don't call it dangerous because we went to Shunning School to learn how to do things right. The local high density short haul, coal 80 kilometres from Huntley to the Glenbrook steel mill. Specialist wagons, high density long haul, wine 800 kilometres from Blenheim to Tamaki. Biscuits of egg noodles, eight old cars cram an old wagon. And eight new cars go on a newer wagon. Today, or one day, many will make that second journey by rail. The model here been prepared by the architects to show the development plan that they are thinking about. It has a mixed use on the site with office blocks. These um, longitudinal forces, we're going to have eight cars at maximum there, we're going to get a lot of longitudinal stresses on that frame. We're going to have to put a bracing in there, I think. We hope to develop a large atrium and open concourse area in between these wings with the office blocks further back. Property executive Bill Guest and general manager Kevin Hyde contemplate a railways that is more than transport. And you'll remember that we said that the, the marketing mix was a combination of planning, of pricing, and of course distribution, and in fact, that's where we came in. This shot from the last train of the night before shows the extent of excavation to allow track into the new cutting, which would connect with the new viaduct that's present under construction. The old viaduct here was connected temporarily to the new cutting to allow services to continue. Unlike roads, railways are expected to provide and pay for right of way as well as transport services. The track prior to tunnel demolition was skidded out of the tunnel using a locomotive and taken aside for reuse in the new temporary alignment. Track outside the tunnel was removed using excavators and laid to the side to allow the temporary alignment to be constructed before reuse. Peter Ellery was one of the site engineers on the Horopito deviation, one of the many sections rebuilt on the main trunk during electrification. Tunnels made way for cuttings, 
and curves and gradients were eased. The project had a sense of history about it. Here machines were rebuilding a line that 80 years before had been put through by animals and men. And the job was a little different because the deviation intruded upon the national park north of Oakuni, requiring compromise between engineering and conservation. Ellery and his colleagues also had to contend with building a new route over and around the old line where the trains were still running. Here we see the gear waiting for train movements to pass before carting across to the new fills. Here we see a train viewed from the remaining portion of Tunnel 15, falling from the old alignment on and into the new cutting. Central control from Light Engine X601 at National Park, over. Yeah, central receiving um, Light Engine X601. Yeah, Mark, when are we getting a run back to town, over. Yeah, now look, I'll have to leave you there. Um, that 616 that went through, he's reported a track fault. So, uh, I've got hold of a ganger and we'll have to wait until uh, track clearance. So, while you're there, you may as well have lunch out. Uh, Train yeah, advisors and engine. working timetables are followed until the unexpected happens. Without the RMD or the mail, you wouldn't be running a bus around there. I deliver Speedlink parcels down to Wyndham. I think everybody knows me when I'm in the bus, and some of them don't know me when I'm out of the bus. I think most of them are happy with the way that I'm, I do things around here.
thing which is when you start up in the morning, you think, oh, I've got to listen to myself talking again. But after a while, you forget about it. And uh, there you go, and just do your normal commentary because they're all new people, something new to them. Like our nature, very close to nature, and this type of country suits me. Like the history in it, you sort of go back. Running a railway is strategy. 16,000 wagons around the country are on the computer at fleet control. Wagon URC44, four silos from Portland Cement, Whangarei, Tutirapa. Nine thousand liters of wine at Tamaki, that last night passed the fridges at Taihami. UK five eight seven at Bluff, from freezing works at Matara. Two containers of frozen lamb consigned to Bahrain. Consumption: shish kebabs for a sheik. PK274 at Oteria, a container of clay to be railed to Auckland Container Terminal and shipped to Japan. UK18342, a container of cheese to be collected at Edendale. Destination, mainland of Dunedin. local consumption. Freight train 365 nearing Matata. 966 tons. Various commodities including five coal wagons for the dairy factory at Apotiki. Train 228 Pirata, one of three express coal shuttles to Glenbrook Steel today. Train 616, northbound coming down the Rarimu spiral. 108 wagons and a kilometer long. Train 819, the unique sound in the Buller Gorge. traditional West Coast train of cement and coal. Train 482 between Murapara and Kaurau, New Zealand's heaviest scheduled train. Three locomotives, 53 bogey wagons, carrying one and a half thousand trees. Train 482 at 2,500 tons of fast-moving forest.
1.52 p.m. The Transalpine is returning across the South Island. Of the 57 who came over from Christchurch this morning, 29 are making the return trip the same day. For this is a train offering a journey rather than a destination. An hour ahead of the passengers, an electric hauled 600 ton coal train passing up through the Oteira tunnel. Quiet, steady, unspectacular. Another shuttle unloads 750 of the 700,000 tons of coal railed to Glenbrook in a year. Two o'clock, hillside workshops, Dunedin. Getting ready to pour steel for wagon parts. Cast iron brake blocks, the ultimate basic railway item, and a staple unit of foundry production. Once steam locomotives were built here. This afternoon, DC 4110 emerges from hut shops after repairs and a paint job. The changing railway has now led to consolidation of workshops for wagon repairs and overhaul of the nation's diesel fleet. Preventive maintenance in the future will mean that new electrics entering service will need minimum overhaul time. Preventive maintenance over two decades has enabled DC4110 to average 100,000 kilometers a year. Preventive maintenance to rolling stock and track and all kinds of ingenious hardware to do the job. But there are some jobs that stay the same. I've been there for about 29 years. You get to know it fairly well. Still a lot of it unexpected happens, you think you know it, but then again, it turns around and you don't really know it. Well, I probably know every curve and gradient, yes. Butch McDonald and his gang have been on the job here, near the Conway River, relaying with new and heavier rail. It's all rush when we do go, but I like the whole job, yeah. I think most of the boys in the gang like it, or they wouldn't be here. Well, we've virtually got to work to suit the trains, that's the whole point of it. The train control, they've got to get the trains through. They all think that you should be working when a train goes past, but they forget that where we're working is on the track with the train's running, so we don't want to be turned into mince meats or anything. Today they'll relay three 76 metre lengths. That's 11 cricket pitches. Well, you get, I don't know so much fit, but you seem to get fit to this job. Go on, lift. Yeah, waste tons that round. It's all leverage, you know, knowing where to lift it. And with crowbars and hot, where to lift it, sort of thing. Yeah, you've got to have the whole team working together. One joke is slacking, someone will get hurt. Around the nation, 
there are five to six thousand crossings of the railway line, but only Spay Street at the north end of the Invercargill Yards survives to enjoy the personal touch. semaphore signals will soon be a thing of the past, but there will always be signals and people to work them. Electronics also help to route trains through busy locations. It's a bit like operating a model yes. railway. Okay. Hello. Middle yard to loco, please. Middle yard to loco? Which end? Uh Oh yeah, okay. Hello? Hello? Yes? Number three, the middle yard. Middle yard, right out, thank you. Hello? Yeah, hang on, there's, uh, can we go from uh, the south yard down to the car yard straight? Like the passing of a train, technologies come and go. But as time has passed by, a culture and history has emerged. of George Troop is included among important New Zealand historic places. Seven eight seven and the Olympic Manor Oh yeah. Just going through Karka here is six one six. Bit later? Yeah. Yeah, you got uh, held up the park there. Alright, oh, I'm extremely satisfying, you know that. It's got, uh, this type of life suits me, away from the hustle and the bustle. Flying in over Cook Strait, pottery from the Akaroa bus should be delivered in Thorndon tomorrow morning. four in South Down Depot, and the routine countdown for the night's freight has begun. Whiteware, wine, clockwork ducks, or compact discs. Just say all this goes in an express carrying 46 containers. 23 wagons at $100,000, the loco at over $2 million, that's up to $10 million for the hardware alone. 
late afternoon, a time for departures and destinations. Littleton, another 600 tonnes from the west coast to help make the over 300,000 tonnes that sail from here each year for steel in Japan. The Portland shunt, cement for pipes in a cow cocky's paddock. Number seven shunt, a tiry industrial estate near Dunedin. After 1,600 kilometres, fridges from Auckland. Higher up, the branches and the trunk. Below, the weed roots of the system, the industrial siding. And on such a siding of Pacific scrap, the ultimate destination. Some of those grain wagons for Ashburton. I hope they're on their way, all right? I see there's about seven or eight ZAZPs heading south, so I'll get on to Trevor and Christchurch and get, make sure that they send ZAZPs back north to balance it up. The business of running a railway is most successful when it is unspectacular. Where movements around the network operate in ordered response. It is a business that responds to the patterns of days and seasons. And in the regularity of operations of the network, its real achievements are those most taken for granted. Every four years, the three ships of the rail ferry fleet carry the equivalent of the country's population. In changing times, railways have moved from the pervasive role they once played in the community. Once an operation, now they have become a business. Establishments and institutions may alter, perhaps a microcosm. Few railway people now play in the Addington Workshop's brass band. And it has a new name, Rail Freight Brass. The institution persists and the band plays on.
times and technology may change. But every night, trains climb the spiral at Raurimu on a route that has remained since the railway came. After 125 years of railways in New Zealand, these two locomotives symbolize the past and the future. And they have a lot in common, for water power can generate steam and electricity. Their drivers, and all those other people who make this happen, commit their skills, their lives, to the business of achieving destinations.